Hey guys, Zark here, and today I'm bringing you guys another video, and we are back on Inform 7. We're going to do the small things, part 2, whatever. We're going to get right into this, because I want to get every single one of these down, so then next episode can be the final episode, which will be about reading matter and releasing. The former I've already touched upon, and then we can go through releasing what you can uh, use to release etc etc so we're gonna get straight into these uh, small things I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of them to do and yeah we're gonna nail straight into it so let's say for example that one of these animals here we've got lupus goro alpha and zagraf let's say that one of them you don't want them to uh, you don't want the readers to know their name just yet um, so Let's um, have it um, as lupus. All right. Let's say that um, lupus. I don't know why I always use lupus as the. Um, actually, no. Let's not use lupus because obviously the table. Um, actually, yeah. Let's do. Yes, lose. Uh, use lupus actually. So, lupus is an animal in the bedroom. Uh, what we can have is when play begins, uh, we can have um, now the printed name of lupus is unknown beast um now the description of lupus is what is this thing simple now theoretically if i haven't messed this up which I have. Um, so let me just see why I've messed this up right now. Um, oh, okay, I need the uh, speech marks here. That's why. Now it should work. There we go. All right, so when we go into th uh, the thing here, you can see unknown beast is its name. Now, if I go back north and north again, and we go to examine unknown beast you can see you can't see any such thing why is that you can see in the thing that unknown beast is surely there that's because the um, inform still knows uh, the unknown beast lupus as lupus because we've called it lupus here so what we also need is we need a third command now you don't need to pull it in like a block like this uh, I don't think uh, I might not even work like that uh, what I would do is I would put understand um, unknown beast as lupus when the printed name of lupus is unknown beast now I'm just gonna definitely double check to make sure that that is definitely the right code. Um, I'm actually not even sure where I have put the uh, code in my final code. I believe it was way down. It was like here. Uh, understand bloody table as the hellstrom table. Yeah, so that should work. So um, now you can see examine unknown beast. What is this thing? So, there are three things right off the bat that you can find out. So, if you want to have an animal or a person or an item, um, or even a room, I believe you could have, um, you want to change its printed name and its description, uh, you just have now the printed name, now the description. You always need to have printed name, not name, uh, because the name of the thing is whatever you've already called it in your code. So, lupus. Uh, you're just saying, right, this is printed into the game first. Um, so I could obviously change that back. Um, I could have uh, a code after here, um, which I believe, again, I probably have. Um, yeah, so after asking Lupus about something, if a topic is that, and then you could also have um, if the topic is who are you um colon now the printed name of lupus is lupus and that theoretically should then change it okay so 
I typed it in wrong. That always works when you type things in wrong. Now what's the issue? Um, okay. What have I put wrong there? Uh... Oh, okay. I forgot to put the speech marks in again. Uh, I don't know why I did that twice in a row. So always put your speech marks in, guys. Okay, there we go. Um, so now if we ask unknown beast, who are you? Um... Okay. Oh, I think I need to put about, don't I? There we go. For some reason you have to put about, I don't know why. Um, okay, there we go. My name is Lupus. What am I even doing in your bedroom? I have no idea. And then if we type look, that's now changed to Lupus. So that is really nice and simple. And make sure you have the understand um, rule here. This is so, so key. Uh, because if you whatever you have the printed name as if it isn't the same as what you've already coded the, into no um there will be no interaction you can't interact with them at all um so you want to put that in there so every single change make sure you do that um so that is simple there um so let me just get rid of that and then another one um is having an item on a player uh, I'm pretty sure I've already done this with the key, uh, but let's do a, another one. So let's come down to here. Let's have, um, I don't know, um, knife uh, is carried by the player. The description of knife is why the bloody hell do you have a knife? with you and again if I haven't cocked anything up okay I already have another knife so um, I didn't realize I had another knife in here yep there, there's a knife there uh, so you can see obviously two knives can't have that uh, so let's have a let's change it to fork then um, there we go and if I go to inventory, you can see I am carrying a fork. I can drop fork. Um, no, I cannot drop frock. I can drop fork and I can look and you can see it's obviously in, going to be in there as well. You can see fork and then I can take it again. Simple. So again, if you want to have an item on your player already, that is the way to do it. Um, now another one this this is going to be pretty interesting um and can really help you in your games uh definitely did with me if you have areas that you want to be on the map um and you can't go in them for whatever reason maybe um something's happening you can't get away you know you're being chased or something you can't go away or you just have no reason to go back there and you want to stop the player endlessly going in a loop you can use the instead rule now you can use the instead rule in two um in loads of different ways but the two main ways is if you don't want a, play, a player to go into a place or if you don't want a player to pick up an item uh it's very very simple so uh for example we have a wooden table here um now if i go into the thing here uh, I think I can take the wooden table, as you can see. Well, that's pretty stupid, right? So, if I just stop this, because I've got the uh, music in the background. Uh, you haven't, but I have. Um, so, that's pretty, pretty stupid. So, what we can do is we can have, uh, the, obviously, the wooden table. And instead of taking the wooden table, say... Why the hell do you think you can take a table with you? Um, I think that's just it. I don't think you need any more. Uh, if I'm right in that. So if we replay, you can see why the hell do you want to take a table? Inventory, you're not carrying the table. 
Um, so that's one way of using the instead rule. Just instead of taking, say this, and that will say, right, it's, you can't take that, this is what's said to the player. Uh, another one you can do um, is if we don't want to go to the hallway, um, say, let's put it down here, uh, instead of going to the hallway, I actually don't know if that's the right phrasing, uh, we'll see, uh, say not yet, and that should again stop us from going to the hallway, if that's the right code, anyway, so south, as you can see, not yet. And if we go to, if we look, we're still in the kitchen. So there are your two ways you can use the instead rule um, to block off places, to block off items. Um, you can use it obviously in many different ways. Um, instead of picking up this item, this item is magically picked up, for example, um, stuff like that. Uh, the instead rule is a very, very nice rule to mess around with um, and can help you a ton. Um, the next command is one that we won't feature in this, but I will show you the uh, command, and that is command of something new. Now, this is the worst piece of code in the world, because half the time it doesn't work, half the time it does work, um, but sometimes you're just going to have to trial and error. Uh, basically, what this code does is it says, right, You've got all these actions in for, right? You've already coded these actions and they're brilliant, you know, standing, sleeping, eating, moving, all this, you know, you've done most of the work for me, but I don't like that. I don't want you to use walking in that way. So I'm going to say, right, we're understanding walking as something new. We're not, we're not saying that your rule book that you've created is true. We're going to say, right, scrap it, screw the system. Anarchy, we are, I don't even know if anarchy is the right word in that. Um, we're going to overthrow it. Uh, that's basically what this code is. Now, I only know one instance that it works. Um, sometimes it doesn't. I think I tried it to work for sleeping and it didn't. But for standing, it does. So it's just simply understand st um, stand as something new, I believe. Um, let me just make sure that is definitely right. Um, if I go up on my code, it is somewhere, where is it, stand, okay, no, I was wrong, um, anyway, so it's understand the command stand as something new, um, this stand is going to be very key, um, sometimes, uh, if you do want standing in your game, because for some reason, inform decides that standing means you're going to leave the room as well. So you can't just stand up. It always wants you to stand up and leave the room. And then it gets itself confused and it does its own stock text. And you can't edit that stock text as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, this is where my novicity of the program still rides. So have fun, experiment, go on in fiction. Uh, but that is the code there. Understand the command stand as something new. Uh, understand the command, whatever the command is, as something new. So we're going to get rid of that because we don't need it in this play. Uh, don't really, I'd have to make several million different play things for it to work. Um, now, the next thing we're going to go through is the every turn rule. Now, the every turn rule, you can just have every turn, every turn when a variable is true or false, every turn when the player is in this room, etc, etc. Um, you can have many, many different ways to the every turn rule. It is brilliant. Um, so we're going to have every turn, um, if the player has been in, um, let's go, uh, bedroom for exactly one turn, say, yawn. Now, as far as I'm aware, that should be right, I think. No, I messed up somewhere. It was that. Okay, it was a colon. Alright, uh, actually, we don't want to go and replay. We want to go and go. Um, so, you can see at the moment, nothing's um, being said because we're only on turn one. We haven't been in the game, for, uh, been in bedroom for one turn. We have just 
gone. This is like the first turn. Um, so let's um, ask unknown beast about who are you. And it should have said that. Um, okay, why has it not done that? <laughs> um, awkward. I love it when code decides not to work. Hold on, let me see if I can find my actual code for this because I did use this in my game. Uh, the only problem is because this is big, there's loads and loads of different parts of this. Where is it? Alright, here we go. If the player has been in place for exactly one turn, say. Okay, so I don't know why it hasn't worked. Um, I'll be honest, I don't understand why that hasn't worked. Um, okay, there we go, look, worked. So maybe uh, speech for some reason didn't proc it up. Or maybe because it needed another turn, I don't know. Um, but you're just going to have to mess around with that. The every turn rule is nice. Someone's car alarm is going off outside. Which is fun. I hope you can't hear that on the microphone. Uh, so yeah, you got um, every turn if the player's been in there for exactly amount of time. I also had a no one. Um, which, where is it? Where was it? Okay, so I'll just copy this in here. Um, so we had uh, every turn if farmhouse description, which is a variable from a game, is true. Now the description of it is that. Um, so you can have that. Uh, you can have um, every turn um, say this. You know, just every turn it says it. Um, so you can mess around with it, you know, if you're doing a, like, a horror game, for example, um, or, like, a, like, a demonic paranormal type game, and you might, may have, like, a book or a symbol or, or something that contains, like, a demonic entity, um, and, like, you want it to, like, affect the player, you could have, like, um, every turn, if the player has whatever item, um, say this like you feel weaker you feel weird whatever um you can keep having that um so every turn rule is a really nice um rule um that you may want to use um so now we're down to the last three things um so one of them we'll just quickly go back to because uh, i probably should have done this earlier on um we have the wooden table here and we had an instead rule what you can do is instead of making the instead rule, you can have that wooden table is fixed in place. And this means that it again will not let you pick it up. So if we go south, uh, unlock the door with key, god damn it. We go south and we take the wooden table. We can't, it's fixed in place. So that's again a different way of going around that. Now the last two things that we've got is scenery and props. Now I actually got this code from someone on Infiction, I really could not remember who it was right now. I want to say it was Hanano. I want to say it was Hanano, um, I actually kind of want to check, uh, I'm going to quickly check because I don't want to quote someone wrongly. Um, because I'm a nice person like that. Um, okay, I gotta remember my login now. Um, I think that's my login. That's not my login. That's my login. Alright, I, I keep always, I always forget my login. On here. Um, right, so it was. I don't even know where it is. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, someone's this car alarm that keeps going off is really, really annoying. 
I really hope you can't hear that in the background. Because uh, that is really, 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 really. <laughs> I can't find it. Okay, it was Hanano. Right, so it was Hanano. Um, so shout to Hanano uh, from Int Fiction that said about this code here. Um, and the code is here. All right. So we'll just put it down here. So a prop is a kind of thing. A prop is usually scenery. Check taking a prop. Say you do not need it right now. Check examining. It's like every other blah, blah, blah. So basically, if you want items that you don't want to be picked up or whatever, um, you can do it like this. So scenery is a great thing. Um, if you've got something in the description, uh, for example, um, if you describe about this tree that you can see, um, or this house that you can see, um, you can have that house, that tree is scenery, uh, so you can examine it, but you can't, um, it won't come up saying, you know, um, like on the side here, you can see the rusty door, or the pile of clothes and whatnot. Um, if I want to say, um, you need to go through the door, um, to get out to the kitchen, for example, um, then you can get rid of that rusty door if you have that scenery. Uh, so that's what scenery is. It basically means that it won't be repeated twice. It's in the background. Um, a prop from this is just a, a thing that you don't really want to be taken. It has no significant value, but it's there to make the scene up. For, so, for example, what I was using it for was I had a stables. So I had a saddle and I had rope, I believe. Um, oh, I had hay. I had hay and I had saddle. Uh, one thing that you can do is if you do want it so you can possibly pick it up or examine it, you can have it and say it's not scenery because with this code here, a prop is kind of thing, a prop is usually scenery, every single thing you say is a prop will be scenery. So you can always say that a saddle is not scenery or item isn't scenery, whatever the item is. So I think that is really it with the um, small things. So I hope you guys did enjoy um, this episode. Uh, like I said, the last uh, next episode will be the last episode, and it will be reading and releasing. Um, and then I will be releasing both this source code for the um, YouTube code that we've been, you know, just putting loads of different code in, and also the final code that I had from the Beast Within. That, as you can see, is a long, long code um, that you can go and see. So, anyway guys, this was Ark, if you guys did enjoy, leave a like down below, subscribe if you for more content, I'm sorry if this was a longer episode, but I wanted to get everything out of the way, and I will see you guys in the next episode, peace out.